how we run a SMPTE time timecode video um, during our gatherings that essentially takes a video being shown on screen and the audio being played by the live band and syncs them in perfect tandem um, so that they can be played together. Um, so we use a couple different programs to achieve that. Um, but the first part of the signal chain is we have a computer running Ableton Live on our stage that provides click and loops to our band in normal circumstances, um, but it also sends a time code um, to front of house to sync up the video and the audio. Um, so how that works is it gets sent from Ableton into our interface here at front of house, um, and then from there on are a couple of different programs to take care of the rest. So um, I'll walk you through each part of that. So the first program that we use is called Hooray, um, and this will be the default that you will see when you first open it. Um, and so the one thing that we use um, right off the bat is called an LTC reader. It's called a linear time code reader. So if you don't already have it right here in this section, you can add one by clicking there and right there. Um, and this little window will pop up. Um, in the event that it doesn't pop up, you can click on the little gear and it'll do the same thing. Um, so you can notice right now that the audio device is set to build, built in microphone. And here in this audio meter here, um, you can actually see it picking up my voice. Um, so obviously that is not the audio device we want to use. Um, I'm going to select my interface, which in our case is a Scarlett 4i4. Um, and the top section here refers to the audio device. The, sec the second section here refers to the specific channel within that device. So my Scarlett 4i4 technically has four or six inputs. Um, and so I'm using input one which is what is actually receiving the SMPTE time code from our Ableton machine. So you can see here there's a bunch of different options. I'm going to make sure that one is selected for me. Um, so I'm going to start with the time code here so you can kind of see what that looks like. All right, so there's my time code. You can see it is receiving it from Ableton, which is great. Um, and then this audio meter you can see is at around negative 6 dB. And that's kind of the sweet spot for you because you don't want too much signal but you don't want too little signal. Um, and the way that you can adjust this is by adjusting the actual input on your interface. So I'm gonna pull it all the way back, that's super low, or you can jack it up, that's way too high. Um, by adjusting this, I can pull it back to about negative six, and that is the spot you wanna be at. So I'm gonna stop this time code in a second, but before I do that, um, a couple more things you wanna make sure you get right in Hooray is the sync source. So the sync source is set to internal right now. Uh, we just set up this LTC reader. It's labeled four. Um, it should be probably one if it's the first time you're setting it up. Um, but I'm selecting LTC reader. And then I wanna make sure that format is set to 30. Now format is measured in frames per second. Um, but it can be confusing because um, it is not referring to frames per second in the way that um, say a video file would be referring to the actual content. What this is referring to is the way that it reads the incoming time code. So basically what you want to know is you want it to be set to 30, which is the highest, not 30 drop. That is a different feature that we do not use. Um, you want to make sure that it's set to 30. So then once that's done, you can click this little clock, and basically that locks it to the incoming time code. So all your settings are locked in to this particular time code. So I'm going to stop my time code here, um, and then I will show you the next piece of the puzzle. So the next section of, con or, uh, of programs that we use is Video Slave. This is Video Slave 4, which looks significantly different from Video Slave 3, um, but it is still very usable and there's a lot of good features in here. So I'll show you how that works. Um, the first thing we want to do is set up the preferences for Video Slave. So if you click on Video Slave and Preferences, um, under General, the first thing we want to do is we want MTC in to be our LTC reader. Um, so right now, you can see it doesn't actually show up. Um, so in the event of that happening, we can hit rescan available MIDI ports. And now when I go back in, LTC Reader 4 is right there. So that's great. The next thing we want to do is under display. So under display, you want to make sure that siphon video device is checked. Um, that is unchecked. That is checked. Um, if it is unchecked, it will not show any content within ProPresenter and then you will have some issues. So you wanna make sure that that is checked. You wanna make sure that these overlays are not checked. Um, this is what checked looks like. That is unchecked. 
So then you are good to go. And pretty much what that would look like is if you had that checked, you can see that it'll actually show up on your display, which you do not want um, if you are showing it on an audience screen. So make sure those are unchecked. So that is it in preferences. Now we're going to actually load in our content. So um, most of the time we will be running one song, um, but in the event of multiple songs, I'll show you how that works as well. So I'm going to go to my finder here, my documents. My first song is called Rattle. And I'm going to click and drag it from my documents into the media bin, and it's showing up right there. So, this does not mean that, uh, that it will actually play on your screens. Um, just because in the media bin doesn't mean it's actually in your timeline here. So, uh, what you're going to want to do is click and drag, and you can drag it onto this first track here. Um, so, something that's really important about SMPTE videos is obviously the time code itself. So the time code that is being sent for this particular song is one hour. Um, so if I click on this, that'll actually bring it up here. And then you can go to properties. Um, so your endpoint should be one hour. Um, right now it's really close to one hour, but not quite. So that'll actually cause some sync issues. So in order to change that, um, you could click and drag it all the way back, and that'll set it up right. Or, if it's not quite perfect, um, what you'll have to do with other multiple um, songs as well is you can go and edit this time code. So make sure it's not trim, it's under move, and that'll actually keep your file intact while moving it to the correct position. Um, I double clicked, I'm going to double click again, and now I can change that. So I'm going to page over to the right with my arrow key, make that zero. Oops, that should be zero as well and then you want to hit enter. So you can see it just moved to the perfect uh, position, which is great. The out point is set automatically based on the length of your content. Um, and then once you got it in the sweet spot, you can hit lock region. Now that sucker is locked in there, so you're good to go. Um, so that is one song. Um, within your video track, there's often audio embedded. If this is the case and you don't want that audio to be pushed through the iMac channel, um, you can um, go here and mute the actual audio track. Um, so this is a little drop down menu. Um, you can just hit the M, which stands for mute. So now that audio from this video is completely muted. Um, if you wanted to use audio from this particular track going through your iMac fader on your board, you can drop it down. Um, you can unmute it and then drop it down. Um, and down here, you actually have a volume control. So if you click on here and hold, it'll bring up an audio level adjustment. Um, zero is full blast. And then all the way back to infinity is completely muted. Um, so you can have some nice fine tune adjustments there. I do not need the, the audio for this track coming from this channel, so I'm going to mute that. So that is the first song. Um, so. I'm, I have two more songs I'm going to load in here. So I'm going to load in this guy, just drag and drop, and then I'm going to load in this guy, also drag and drop. And I'm going to hide this for you. It's on the way. Um, so when you have more than one uh, timecode video, so the way that we set it up is this one, like I said, the timecode is one hour. For this second song, or any second song, it's going to be two hours. And then for the third one, it's going to be three hours, and so forth. Um, and the way to line those up perfectly, um, which is nice, you don't have to do it in the timeline here. Um, all you have to do is um, click and drag, just like we did the first one. But instead of putting it up here in the same audio video track, you can go down here to add a new one. So it'll drop wherever I dropped it, um, which is not a big deal. Um, because, again, like we did before, I can click on it, go to Properties, and now I'm going to set this endpoint, double click, double click again, to 2. So I'm going to page over with my arrow keys, 0, page over again, 0, and 0, and then enter. And so you can see that lines up perfectly with the 2 hour mark, and then the out point gets set automatically. I'm going to lock my region so it doesn't change. And for this one, I also do not need audio coming from here. So I'm going to mute that as well. And then for this one, I'm going to drop it down, again, not into this one, because that's the same as the, the spoken word element. I'm going to go down here, and then I'm going to click on that, properties. Same thing, I'm going to make sure it's on move, double click, 
set this to three hours, enter, now it locks in perfectly. I'm going to lock this region again, and then we're good to go. Um, so you have a zoom control here, but if I zoom out, you will notice that this whole timeline does not go to three hours, or it goes to three hours and stops, uh, which is not good. So um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to timelines, and I have a timeline here which you can edit, um, and you can rename it whatever you want, um, but you can see the start time code is one hour. The time code duration is two hours, and that's this entire area, including any video tracks and audio tracks that you have. So I'm going to make sure that this is set to three. Enter and apply. Now you can see that there is plenty more to work with. Um, so the last thing I want to do is for video track three here, I actually want the audio coming from here. Um, so I'm going to leave this unmuted, and then I'm going to make my audio adjustments here depending on what I need. I've personally found that negative six is a good, good spot there, um, and then you're good to go. Um, so those are solid and ready to go. Again, you can name, rename this timeline if you want. I can name it gathering. Doesn't really matter. You can also edit these video tracks as well. So I can name the songs if I want. Might help you keep track of what you're doing. So then your songs are ready to go. Now, one last thing that you want to do before you leave Video Slave is you want to make sure that Video Slave is linked to Hooray. And so to do that, you can click on this little icon here. It's called the Sync State. Um, right now it is unsynced. When I click it, it'll start blinking. That means it's synced. So now, when I go to my DAW, which is Ableton, and I start the song Rattle, the first song should cue. See, there you go. So you can see that it is running in Hooray, everything looks good, and then that triggered this video, so that works perfectly. I'm gonna stop that, and I'm gonna try the next one. It says the spoken word element. All right, so that works perfectly as well. And then finally, the last one for There's a King, I'm going to cue that, and that looks great. All right, so that means that Video Slave is configured as needed. So the final piece of the puzzle here is ProPresenter 7. And so with ProPresenter, you have a couple of different things that you have to do um, initially to make your life easier, and then just to make it function properly. Um, so I have just a little playlist here with a timecode video. Imagine these are your lyrics, and this is the first slide. Um, so, the first thing you want to do in ProPresenter is go to ProPresenter, Preferences, and basically we are going to create what's called an input, a video input. You can also do this with audio, but we don't really use that. Um, so, we want to create a video input specifically for timecode video. So, I'm going to add a, a video input here. I'm going to rename it. I'll just call it timecode. Okay, enter. Now you can see the device has no video source right now, so I'm going to select Video Slave. So right now you can't see that, um, but you should be able to see a, a preview of the actual content once it starts. So actually I could start this for you just to sh show you, but so there you go. So now you can see the time codes running, and basically how this input works is that whatever is being shown in Video Slave it is, is what is being shown in this timecode video, video input. Um, it doesn't matter what it is. So basically, um, ProPresenter is just acting as a conduit for whatever video slave is displaying. So, um, what's cool is that we can use that one video input for every song, even though we're showing different things for different songs, because video slave is taking care of that. Um, so I'll pause that. And so now that you have your video input set, you can get out of there. Um, and what we're going to do is make life easier in the long run. So what we're going to do first is you go to your media bin. Um, so this is normally where we have our, um, our jump backs, where we have different backgrounds and stuff like that. Um, underneath that, there is a section for video input. So we're going to add a video input. Um, so by hitting this plus button, that we only have one configured, and that's our time code video. So I'm going to click on that. So now... Um, whatever, whenever I have a timecode video of any kind, I can just click and drag this 
on top of a slide or separately from other slides, um, and it'll be almost all the way configured. Um, so what I'm going to do to make that process easier is I'm going to right click on this and I'm going to go to behavior and you can see there's three options. There's video input, foreground, and background. Um, basically if you go over to here in your layers for per presenter, video input is on the bottom, media or foreground, or I'm sorry, media or background is second and then above that is your slide content which is also considered uh, foreground. So what I'm going to do just to make transitions a lot easier is I'm going to make this timecode video input, I'm going to make that background. So now when I, when I throw it in, it's always going to default to background. Another cool thing you can do is transitions. Um, right now I have a dissolve on this. Um, so you can go through and, and create whatever transition you want, um, but I like dissolve. And then you can set your time. So I set it to 2. So anytime I drag this in, the transition is already set. The timecode video input is already linked. Um, and then all I have to do is add an audience look to that to determine how it's displayed on my audience machines. So um, I'm going to drag this in here. Um, and again, you can throw it on top of a slide or next to a slide. I'll just throw it on top because that's blank. And then I'm going to move this. Um, another way you could do this um, is you can uh, right click on this and then add action and then add the live video action right here from your action palette. Uh, but honestly, that's more clicks than you need if you already have this set up. So um, it's good to get that configured early on and then it makes life simpler down the road. All right, so we're going to create a double wide timecode video audience look. Um, we'll go up and add a new look. And I'm going to relabel that double wide timecode video. All right. And so um, this will look a little bit different if you don't have double wide. Um, if you are not a double wide location, then you will not have all three of these screens. You will have one. Um, and this will still apply to your one screen. Um, but Right now we're going to do a double wide time code video audience look. So I'm going to deselect my sides and center content here because I don't want them this video showing up in that configuration at all. Um, so I'm going to be working with my double wide screen. So um, what I'm going to do is deselect props and messages, announcements, um, and video input. So the reason I'm deselecting video input is that um, we changed this from the video input layer to the media layer or background layer. Um, traditionally, when, when we run a song, um, we'll have a motion jump back background, um, and that will be on the media layer. And then we will have our lyrics that we show on screen, and that will be our slide layer. Now, the main purpose that we use timecode videos for is for a stylized lyric video. Um, and we don't want the lyrics being controlled by the graphics operator to show up on the audience screens. We just want it to show up on the back confidence monitor. So an easy way of doing this is deselecting the slide layer for that. So now the only content that's going to be showed, shown on the audience screens is our media layer, which is our video. And that's it. Um, if you want to mask your center screen, um, then and so we don't want to put a mask on our double wide screen. We want to put a mask on our center screen. So double wide, if I added a mask here, it would stretch across both screens and it wouldn't be configured correctly at all. Um, I'm going to put a mask on the center and then I'm going to hit make live to save my work. All right, so I'm going to add our audience look directly on top of the trigger slide that we just made. And now, when I click on this, um, you'll see in this preview, the timecode is not running, but you'll be able to display it. And there we go. It fades in really nice. Um, and then you can run lyrics such as this. I actually put a little, um, little lyric text there, which you can see does not show up on this screen at all. Um, but it does on your confidence monitor. Um, so that is how you set up an entire timecode video set.